Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. After completing the Foundation just the other week, I moved right into AWE. Similar to Foundation, I spent three separate sessions making my way through it, but I'm going to talk about it in one piece here since I got through it fairly quickly. It did feel a little bit shorter than Foundation maybe, but that was partly because I stuck to main objectives and didn't sink time into anything like I did seeking out the cat statues in the first expansion. AWE takes you to the investigation section, a new floor available via the main bureau elevator. The story in AWE doesn't really build on Jesse's ongoing adventure and is largely told through artifacts like reports and recordings of past events. There's little to no mention of the board, former, or the hiss. Instead, you discover more detail about the struggle and events taking place within the bureau leading up to the hiss invasion, as well as more detail about the connection between Crater Lake, Bright Falls, the characters of Alan Wake, and the bureau. There is a threat to eliminate in investigations, though, and that's the immediate goal and motivation for exploring the area. It becomes clear that there was a lot of tension within the Bureau, in particular between Kirkland, the head of investigations, and Trench, the director prior to Jesse. Investigations seem to be acting not only to investigate current and past altered world events, but to also act as a sort of internal affairs department. Kirkland was especially concerned about Trench's increasingly strange behavior leading up to the Hiss invasion, but also the questionable morality of the prime candidate program and the internal politics of the Bureau. Kirkland ultimately resigned given the conflict. There are also hints of a dangerous entity trapped in the firebreak that separates investigations from the rest of the Bureau. As director, the responsibility falls to Jesse to intervene. Completing this objective takes you through the firebreak to the active investigations hub area and through three separate AWE recreations that branch off from it, similar to the ordinary AWE recreation encounter during the main story. Langston, uh, the head of the Panopticon where all the altered items are stored, is your contact here, though he only appears over radio. The Fra Mauro AWE deals with the Apollo 14 space mission from which four astronauts returned, even though only three had set out. The fourth appears to have been some sort of alien entity that was able to convince the others it was always present and part of the mission, even though it seems unable to communicate clearly through speech. The Eagle Limited AWE involved a domestic terrorist attack on a passenger train. It wasn't entirely clear if this might be related to the Blessed organization previously linked to the intentional creation of altered items, and the movie camera altered item, as well as the production of a number of B-movie films. Finally, the Bright Falls AWE is a more limited area and essentially involves the final fight, but details around the Bureau's involvement with this event and its characters are scattered throughout all of these areas, including that the monster Lucent investigations is a transformed Dr. Hartman, the character that briefly imprisons Alan during the events of Alan Wake. Like Foundation, there are some new gameplay elements in AWE. There is a new weapon called Surge that was fun to play around with, though grip still remain by far the most effective weapon for me amongst all the options. Surge fire is a clump of explosive that can be detonated with an unaimed pull of the trigger, so the damage it does isn't as immediate as other weapons. There's also another new enemy, an elevated ranger that hovers and dodges like elevated enemies, but attacks primarily with gunfire and grenades. Like other elevated, you'll need to attack them twice quickly with launch to drain their innate dodge and then be able to land a hit. The encounters with the Hartman monster reminded me a little bit of Resident Evil 2 or 3, in that there are repeated encounters with the monster where you need to avoid and can't fight and defeat it directly, at least not until later. These sections are a little bit trial and error. Since Hartman thrives on the darkness, you need to move quickly through the areas and activate light sources to force it away. If you're too slow, you'll be grabbed and taken out. A neat thing in AWE is the use of mechanics from Alan Wake, such as the need to carry a light to see around you, but also as a weapon to burn the darkness away from certain doors. This played out like my second visit to the chasm in Foundation, using launch to carry a spotlight. Not terribly deep, but a neat reference to Alan Wake and something not all players may have experienced in Foundation. There are a few side quests in AWE as well. There's another set of janitor missions from Ati, although Ati himself doesn't make an appearance. 
These involve finding and destroying uh, sets of mold, reinvigorating plants, or burning away globs of darkness with a light source in various locations. I did all of these, but they're nothing too engaging, and I think just awarded me some ability points. At this point, additional abilities, materials, and mods were all pretty unnecessary and not really enhancing my power. There are a few new altered items as well, but they weren't as involved as previous ones. The Eagle Limited Train involves a small puzzle requiring that you interact with a few different things in a specific order based on the narration each provides. This is fairly easy to brute force. There's also a mailbox that appears in a hidden area you can find and interact with. The most involved item is a pair of arcade machines you may have run across early on back in the Active Investigations hub. These provide some arcade combat challenges you could probably spend some significant time on, but after trying them once, I decided I wasn't looking to extend this adventure beyond the core story, and I didn't spend too much time with them. Overall, aside from the arcade challenges, I think combat felt a little bit more balanced than in Foundation. The lack of the sharpened enemies probably contributed to this, as they were particularly pesky with their speed, melee damage, and teleportation. The new elevated enemies weren't nearly as stressful to deal with. I don't think I had any substantial combat power increase since playing Foundation, but enemies in AWE were around maybe level 8 instead of 9 or higher, making them a bit less tanky. Environments were also more spacious, allowing room to maneuver and evade. I did notice throughout this section that a number of structures and area layouts were recycled and started to feel familiar. Pretty minor, but another indication perhaps that this whole adventure had just about run its course. Here's a quick summary of the main elements that I think exist between the events of Alan Wake and those of Control. Both games take place in the same world. The events in Bright Falls are considered an altered world event by the Bureau and were investigated as such with Cauldron Lake being a place of interest, and Alan Wake being a person of interest with paranatural powers and a potential prime candidate for director of the Bureau. Alan disappeared after freeing his wife Alice from the dark place in Cauldron Lake, remaining trapped there himself, but has become capable of visiting and influencing the real world despite his imprisonment. Dr. Hartman, seemingly drawn by the mystery of Cauldron Lake and his interactions with Wake and Thomas Zane, descended into the dark place or was otherwise a person of interest for the Bureau, and was brought in for questioning. He was ultimately transformed by the darkness and caused havoc within investigations before the section was abandoned to contain him. This transformation may have been triggered or influenced by the presence of Alice Wake, who was also brought into the Bureau for questioning following Alan's disappearance. Strange events seemed to follow her, and the Bureau was keeping an eye on her as well. We found out much earlier in Control that Frank Breaker, former sheriff of Bright Falls and father to Sarah Breaker, who was the sheriff during the events of Alan Wake, was a former Bureau agent. That's referenced again in AWE. There's also mention that Alex Casey, the main character from Alan's famous book series, was or is a real person and an FBI agent who found out about Bright Falls and Alan Wake and was probing the Bureau for additional information just hints of many things, so it leaves lots to think about. Connections and details like these across games have certainly been one of the most enjoyable elements for me. Coming to the end of my whole control adventure has been a nice feeling. I think it has run its course, and I'm ready to move on with other games to play, including Alan Wake 2. The mod system has been stagnant for a while, and that's essentially true of abilities in combat as well. I appreciated that AWE was a bit different than Foundation, and so strongly referenced Alan Wake. While it was an abrupt end, I look forward to, I hope, a new control game in the future with some new or expanded mechanics, and a new story to discover that builds beyond this one. I'm eager to jump right into Alan Wake 2, and will be doing so, but also have a giant list of old and new games I wish I could make more progress on. I've been wanting to do something retro for a while, so maybe I'll be playing a couple things in tandem but I'm excited to complete this look at Remedy's Core Connected series. With that, as always, thanks so much for checking out the video. Say hi down in the comments if you want to talk about games or let me know what you think. And until next time, take care.